Welcome everybody to this webinar on a guide to mentoring. Um, firstly, to introduce myself, I'm Marie Robertson, the Internal Development Manager here at Cube Learning. Um, and developing a mentoring staff as part of my role is one that I'm very passionate about. Um, so I'm absolutely delighted to be able to discuss this with you today in celebrating National Mentoring Day. Um, my objectives, as we can see on the screen, there are to provide an overview of mentoring um, and its purpose uh, while promoting the benefits. Um, so you can understand the positive impact, uh, certainly that mentoring provides for all those concerned. Um, we'll identify the key roles and responsibilities of both the mentor and mentee, and I will provide some top tips for aspiring and current mentors. So first question is, what is mentoring? Uh, well, for me, I see mentoring very much as a support and guidance role, um, focusing on development and growth. Um, either on a personal or a professional level, and uh, sometimes certainly on both. Traditionally, uh, mentoring was seen as a one-way process, but today, um, as it states on the slide, is very much seen as a two-way process, where you as a mentor will have the opportunity to share your experience, your skills and knowledge uh, with the person that you're mentoring. And, and both sides will definitely benefit from the experience, as we will show in a little while. Um, mentoring requires developing a relationship certainly based on trust, honesty and truthfulness. Um, and this is very, very important to establish that right from the start. Uh, your mentors will certainly look to you for support and guidance as required, and they'll possibly view you as a role model to aspire to. Um, certainly these last few years as well as seeing more individuals than ever want a mentor. And many organisations are now trying to implement uh, this mentoring programme within their workplace um, as a learning and development initiative. And they're certainly also beginning to see the real positive benefits um, that it brings to their organisation. So looking at some of the benefits then, and you can see they are vast um, for, for everybody concerned, really, for the organisation, the mentor and the mentee. And there's certainly possibly more benefits than we have actually listed on that slide. Um, looking firstly from an organisational point of view, you can see that mentoring um, helps high quality employees to really feel valued and happy uh, within their, their roles, uh, which in turn increases their productivity and the motivation, and then they're more likely to stay uh, with the organisation. Um, organisations that invest in mentoring programmes certainly um, show an investment in their people and it encourages for an equal and diverse workforce um, who are loyal um, and who will grow with the company sharing the same values and goals. So there are real benefits to be gained from an organisational point of view. Um, for the mentor and the mentee, um, you can see it opens up opportunities uh, that could otherwise be closed. Um, it provides development and the potential for promotion uh, within roles and career progression um, and there's lots and lots of statistics also that support this for example uh, one study found that 25 percent of employees who enrolled onto a mentoring program had a salary increase compared to just five percent of workers who did not participate and also mentees um, are promoted five times more often than those without mentors um, and mentors themselves six times more likely to be promoted. So um, great advantages there. Um, research from the developmental, um, uh, sorry, yeah, Development Dimensions International also found that 60% of UK business leaders um, have had a mentor. And of those, 97% said that they benefited from the advice they received, which is the statistics showing in the corner there. Um, so most mentors and mentees feel empowered um, by a mentoring relationship and they state that they uh, develop um, much greater confidence and uh, motivation. And as we mentioned earlier, many organisations are now really seeing the vast benefits uh, that this brings and uh, linking the support that it provides in promoting good mental health and well-being, um, which is especially relevant uh, during this current time. Um, to develop a successful and effective mentoring programme, it's really important to understand and to be clear on the role and responsibilities um, of both the mentee and mentor, and what to expect from the process and from each other. Um, in some organisations, um, a formal agreement may be drawn up, 
um, agreed and signed um, in advance um, of, of the uh, process. And this outlines exactly what is required, um, how it will be completed, how it will be recorded, tracked, and how progress will be made. Um, and this is something that within a workplace certainly would um, encourage um, to do. However, um, in some situations, informal mentoring has also been found to be very, very beneficial. So uh, whether it's completed on an informal or a formal basis, the roles and responsibilities should absolutely uh, still be clear. In all situations, um, it is the responsibility of the mentee. Uh, and this is a mistake that some people make because they think it is the mentor's um, role to lead the way on developing um, the relationship, but it's actually the mentee that's very much in the driving seat um, and they know how they want to develop and it is down to them to set that approach um, for the relationship and to be clear on what they are trying to achieve. Um, so they will identify the development areas required and with the support and guidance of their mentor will agree on the objectives, the targets and the goals to be achieved. Uh, the mentor certainly should push and stretch them and provide them with possible new ways of thinking um, and this in turn um, leads them to be open-minded and receptive to this and trying out new ways of working. Um, certainly important for the mentee to keep a record of their achievements as well so it's encouraged that they uh, keep a log um, of their learning and professional development uh, within a plan maybe and reflect over their progress and be mindful of their job description um, and base objectives certainly around workplace knowledge, skills and development. Uh, the mentor's main role and responsibility is to provide that insight, the knowledge, the guidance and support and access to appropriate people and resources um, in order to really support the mentee's development. Um, important that the mentors don't do the work for the mentee, um, but to question, direct and guide them, providing that honest, reflective and constructive feedback um, on their development and sharing their own experiences. And we'll touch on sort of reflection and feedback in a moment as well, two vitally important aspects. Um, if you certainly if you facilitate this approach right from the start, um, you'll find it much easier to maintain a positive relationship and to keep their the mentee focused on the task um, in hand as well. Um, you can also see from this that the relationship should not uh, be complicated um, or be a time consuming experience um, as we'll discuss on the next slide. So uh, certainly one of the myths around mentoring is that it takes up a lot of time. And this is certainly uh, not the case that I have found. Um, it's also likely that you're already developing and supporting your colleagues um, and already implementing certain aspects of mentoring within your roles um, currently. Um, if we take the example of mentoring a colleague during an apprenticeship programme, the following uh, sort of gives you some guidance as to what time you would expect to invest. So firstly, um, it will be important to have an understanding, certainly of the qualification or the apprenticeship qualification uh, that your mentee is undertaking, so you can keep the mentee focused um, on the overall objectives required for their achievement. Um, from this, you'll be able to agree those monthly goals and targets and provide the guidance and support that's then relevant and embedded within their qualification. Um, you'll need to hold regular meetings to provide opportunities to discuss progress and achievements and to give that constructive feedback, which is really important. Um, as I said, we will stress in one moment. Um, best practice to negotiate agreed times and ways of meeting in advance. Um, so certainly that may be important if you need to accommodate shift patterns and staff rotors um, to ensure that time is set aside, which works, uh, works best for both of you. Um, in the beginning, you may find that the mentoring sessions need to occur more frequently and may last a little bit longer um, as the mentee develops their skills, knowledge and capabilities. Um, and that then this then becomes a little bit less frequent and lasts for a, a shorter time periods as they then gain uh, more in confidence. Mentoring, you know, definitely for me, um, I see it's a real invest, real investment of your time. Um, and as stated before, you can see the real uh, benefits uh, that it brings and they absolutely are vast. 
um, by developing support and staff, you'll certainly in, in the long term be saving time um, uh, in future. There are four um, stages within a, uh, an effective mentoring uh, relationship uh, throughout the process. Um, firstly, in the first stage, you'll certainly be getting to know each other uh, much, much more. Um, you may already know the person that you are going to mentor, but you will find that you will still further develop your relationship and you'll certainly gain more valuable insight into their specific areas of development. Um, in these early stages, um, a large part of the mentor's role um, involves being supportive um, and creating that reassuring environment uh, for the mentee. Um, so you're going to be establishing that rapport, building a relationship of trust. Um, and it's also within this stage that those expectations of both parties are agreed and understood. Um, can't stress enough the importance of that first stage. You know, it's, it's, it's vital that you have that trust and that rapport. Um, so, you know, you, you're both uh, open to, to the whole process and, uh, and, and sharing of information to make it really effectively work um, in, in the best possible way. Um, the next stage involves that setting of goals. So uh, remember, the mentee is the one in the driving seat. So they're the ones that will be coming to you as a mentor to identify their areas uh, of, of development, uh, where they want to see their careers grow. Um, and uh, they'll certainly have many ideas on goals that they want to set themselves already. Um, they may need your help and support with that. So it may be possible to brainstorm some possible areas of learning. Um, and uh, you will help them to set those, those further goals as well. Um, certainly as a mentor as well, um, you may suggest some useful uh, contacts. Uh, you'll be drawing on your experience and uh, you could also be checking for other training opportunities, uh, whether that be internal or external. So um, the mentee very much in the driving force, but um, you very much supporting within that process. The third stage um, is going to be the longest within the process um, and uh, certainly the emphasis on the mentor's role being one of the challenger uh, within this to really encourage that deeper learning and reflection. Um, a balance certainly needs to be reached so that mentees continually explore their limits, uh, but not to the extent that they feel overwhelmed as well. So that's an important point to make there. Uh, emphasis should be on areas of professional development. Uh, and reviewing general progress and achievements and giving that feedback and guidance on ways to improve performance and uh, progression. And finally, you'll get to the end. Um, with the example of supporting a mentee through their apprenticeship, for example, the natural end uh, will be when they achieve their qualification. Um, and sometimes it may be difficult to end the relationship as it, as it really may develop into a close working relationship as you get to know each other very well. Um, however, defining the end is important and uh, both the mentee and the mentor are jointly responsible for providing that proper ending to the relationship. Um, a good idea is to hold a final review, uh, reflecting on that distance travelled and then confirming further support strategies for further development and, and their career journey. Um, in some cases, mentoring will last for very long periods of time and, and certainly can be over a vast number of years. Um, however, within a work-based programme, there is normally a reason for the support um, and this then uh, generally does come to a natural end. Mentioned uh, a few times, uh, reflection and um, added a slide on encouraging this because uh, for me, I feel it is a real key element to ensuring um, that you um, make the most of this opportunity and uh, the mentees really learn from the progress, uh, from the process, I should say. Um, reflection helps the mentee to review their development experiences. Um, so they learn from them uh, or in order to be able to learn from them. Um, a good mentor will use methods of reflection to help the mentee analyze their experiences. and. Um, one thing to be conscious of is it's tempting to only reflect when something generally has gone wrong. It's, it's human nature, isn't it, to reflect when things go wrong. But um, really important also to reflect on successful or positive experiences um, as uh, really important to identify uh, effective approaches and uh, boost confidence by, by doing that as well in our strengths. 
Um, there are three main types of reflection. Uh, we have perspective. Uh, this is where we reflect on a situation in, a, in advance of it happening. Um, and you might do this by discussing goals or identifying learning opportunities, for example. Um, in the moment, um, obviously, we reflect on things all the time. In the moment, you're probably reflecting on this training as we're doing it now. Um, so reflecting on the task, role or activity that you're involved in at the time um, and considering your actions as well. Uh, retrospective, uh, when you look back um, on things and on events and review how they went and what might be improved upon in future. Um, mentors mostly help their mentees to reflect retrospectively. Um, however, the timing of reflection is very important. Uh, too much delay is likely to cause you and the mentee to forget important details. So I would always encourage uh, your mentees to record reflections, their thoughts and feelings after events, um, so they can then discuss those with you um, and they will remember them. Um, you could also encourage them to complete a reflective learning log um, to, to aid that as well. Um, there are numerous reflective models uh, and techniques that can be used uh, what to aid reflection. Um, I put Gibbs reflective cycle on the slide there as this is a good starting point um, for people uh, sort of new to uh, using a reflective model. Um, it encourages reflection, uh, a description of a situation and feelings, an evaluation and analysis to make sense of the situation and the conclusion that the options are considered and then identify an action to examine what you would do if this situation arose again. Um, some further research on reflective models is something that you could set your mentees to consider uh, to find an approach that works well for them. Um, as I said, there are many different uh, models of reflection that may work better for your mentees. Communication um, obviously plays a big role in successful mentoring, um, and it is very important um, as a mentor that you listen to your mentee and maintain objectivity and balance to allow them to really develop and grow independently. Um, your mentee certainly may share private and confidential information with you um, and I will ask you many questions and it will be really important to give them your undivided attention so you're really able to fully understand the details of their needs um, and their wants as well. Um, also vitally important, um, for your mentee to fully understand what you are saying to them and you may want to paraphrase and clarify on important points as well. Questioning, um, very uh, much an important tool um, when mentoring as well. Um, depending on the type of question asked, um, it can encourage learning and certainly test knowledge um, and attitudes. Um, a single question can be asked a number of different ways and each way will certainly elicit a different response. Um, so by using a variety of questioning styles, you'll be able to challenge your mentee effectively and really explore the behaviours and attitude to their developmental pro, uh, process um, or progress, I should say, sorry. You'll also gain an insight into how they are progressing and what you might need to do to move them forward. Um, when commencing your mentoring sessions, you may want to consider uh, some quick, uh, key questions, um, such as what has worked well for you this month? Uh, and what's not gone so well and why? Uh, what areas of improvement have you identified? And are there any barriers uh, that have prevented you from achieving your agreed goals? And I'm sure you'll think of very many more questions that you can ask. Uh, for me, uh, feedback is vitally important and something that I could probably talk about for far too long <laughs> and bore you with today. Um, but mentees uh, certainly will not reach their full potential if they do not receive feedback about how they can improve themselves. Um, it's constructive feedback which helps us to become more aware of what we do and how we do it. Um, and receiving it uh, gives us that opportunity to change and modify in order to become more effective. So it is vitally important uh, to provide that constructive feedback. Um, it needs to be two-way communication um, and given in a motivational, constructive manner uh, with specific aims uh, that actively improve the mentee. Uh, empathy, timing and location, uh, certainly important factors to consider and praise and recognition for meeting objectives 
kind of must be factored in to inspire the mentee to really progress forwards. Um, in the diagram, uh, you can see that feedback falls into different categories, depending upon the level of support and challenge given. Um, and the aim, um, obviously, is to be fully supportive with your mentee and then to set them challenges uh, within your feedback uh, that you give them. So you're really stretching and pushing them to their best capabilities. Um, you can see some good examples in the top right hand uh, box of the diagram there, which uh, highly support and highly challenge. Um, for example, one of them being, yeah, good work. I'm interested to know how you came to that conclusion and what else can you do? Um, to summarise then, some best practice tips um, to follow. Um, certainly agree uh, realistic expectations. Um, so uh, very important setting those goals right at the very beginning to be realistic and achievable. Um, creating the right atmosphere. Um, you want that environment uh, where um, your mentees can be honest um, with you and being patient as well being able to listen and question your mentee, as we've said, and certainly giving them time to formulate answers to questions as well. So taking that, that time, um, you know, really developing those communication skills with them, encouraging reflection, as we stated. Um, so yeah, set them a goal to, you know, do a little bit more research into reflective models. That's always a good place to start. Um, and encourage them to summarize on what is learned uh, through the development. Um, that constructive feedback, um, really, really important to make sure um, you offer them further suggestions and actions. And really important to challenge them as well. So they are continually developing. That's really what uh, a mentoring um, program is about, really based on development and uh, that uh, professional and personal development there. Um, and remember, don't be afraid to refer your mentees to others. Uh, for help outside your area of expertise as well. Um, they may ask you something, you know, which is completely out of your comfort zone or um, within your, your boundaries of knowledge uh, and limitations. So um, certainly you may need to refer them on to another person who is uh, more able to support them in that situation. Uh, some don'ts. Um, don't take the responsibility for planning activities um, or initiating that, that first contact. Uh, remember, it is the mentee that's definitely in the driving force behind this. Um, they should be the one that comes to you with the development uh, that they need um, and certainly uh, with the goals that they want to achieve as well. Um, important not to interrupt your mentee unless it is to really clarify that understanding. So let, let them talk. Um, you know, you'll find out um, much from them uh, by, by listening to them. Um, don't spend most of the time talking about your own experiences. Certainly want to share them with them, but it's not about that. <laughs> it's, uh, you know, using your experiences to help them develop and drawing on that just when you need to. Um, don't always expect your mentee to get something right the first time. Um, you know, sometimes we, we certainly learn more by our mistakes. Um, and, uh, you know, that can sometimes not always be a bad thing. Um, don't correct them, um, uh, but support them in correcting it. And remember, uh, as I said, we learn from our mistakes, um, as we just said. Um, and don't attempt to solve all of their problems for them. Um, you know, the, a mentor's role is very much to offer those ideas and solutions. Um, and uh, don't forget that frequent communication, absolutely key to that successful mentoring uh, programme. Um, finally, um, some points to uh, think about. Uh, you, you know, you will gain much from being a mentor, um, as, as I've hopefully uh, discussed and shown. Um, it certainly gives you the opportunity to share knowledge, experience and skills with others. Um, and that's great, isn't it, to, to have the opportunity to be able to do that. So the opportunity to contribute to the profession and develop as leaders. Uh, the opportunity to gain uh, further viewpoints as well and interests of other colleagues. We, we also learn much from others um, when we're in a mentoring uh, situation. Um, it's also development of interpersonal skills um, and the challenge to think through issues as well. And uh, time spent 
um, on mentoring will certainly count towards your own continued professional development as well. So um, definitely much to uh, be gained from the process. Um, to recap, I hope you've really enjoyed learning a bit more about mentoring uh, today on this National Mentoring uh, Day and have taken away the positive benefits that it brings. Um, and certainly when completed successfully, the impact that mentoring brings to all concerned is, is vast. Um, and uh, within the process, remember the key roles, responsibilities and the top tips that we have mentioned as well. Um, I love personally being a mentor um, and I find it a real compliment when somebody asks my help and support. And for me, there's nothing more rewarding than developing colleagues and seeing them progress uh, within their roles. Um, and it's one of the reasons why I absolutely love uh, my role and uh, certainly have been a teacher in the past. And I hope that many of you listening today uh, will go forward and experience the same rewards. Um, so thank you very much.